what is life? So all of us have some idea of what life is. But if we are asked for a precise definition of life, we will find it challenging. So with this reasoning, scientists decided to come up with certain characteristics that can be used to differentiate between living things and non-living things. So these characteristics are eight in number and they are as follows. Nutrition, respiration, gaseous exchange, excretion, reproduction, growth and development, irritability and lastly movement. So anything that is considered to be alive should have all of these characteristics in total. Now, anything that is missing one or more of these characteristics is not considered to be a living thing. So in our lesson today, we are going to discuss these characteristics and also explain why they are important to living things. Now, on to our first characteristic, nutrition. So for living things to grow and carry out different body processes, they require a source of food. And this is what is termed as nutrients. Now, the process through which living things acquire and use the food is what is known as nutrition. Now, when it comes to living organisms, they are so diverse. You know, they are so different from one another. So we cannot expect that all living organisms will have a similar mode of nutrition. Now, for example, in the case of plants, plants have the ability to manufacture their own food through a process called photosynthesis. And therefore, they are referred to as autotrophic. So they can use carbon four oxide and water to manufacture complex food substance. How amazing is this, by the way? Now, animals, on the other hand, we cannot do so. So we cannot manufacture our own food. And therefore, we rely on ready-made complex food substances from plants or other animals. Now, why is nutrition important? The reason for this is because it allows organisms to acquire nutrients for body functions such as growth and development, movement, etc. Moving on to our second characteristic, and that is respiration. So you were introduced to respiration in primary. So this is a process whereby living things break down food substances in order to obtain energy. So in the case of nutrition, this is when they obtain and use the nutrients. In the case of respiration, the nutrients that they obtain from the food substances are broken down in order to release energy. So where does this process take place? It takes place within the cells. Now, I want to tell you something. Whenever you see the definition and there are certain terms that are underlined, those are the key terms, the main terms that are supposed to be included whenever you define the process. So the importance of respiration is that the energy produced during respiration is used for body functions such as growth and development, movement and so on our third characteristic is gaseous exchange so gaseous exchange is a process whereby you're going to have exchange of gases between an organism and its surrounding as simple as that in the case of gaseous exchange there are two gases that are involved and these are oxygen and carbon four oxide gas these gases are called respiratory gases so gaseous exchange is defined as the process by which respiratory gases, specifically oxygen and carbon four oxide, pass across the respiratory surfaces. So respiratory surfaces are the surfaces in the body of an organism where the exchange of gases takes place. As simple as that. Now if I may give an example, in an animal's body, specifically in humans, our respiratory surfaces are the alveoli, you know, the air sacs that are found within our lungs. So across the membrane of the alveoli is where oxygen and carbon four oxide are exchanged. Why do we even need to carry out gaseous exchange? Now, I'm going to explain this using an animal as an example. So we require oxygen in order for respiration to take place. Therefore, without oxygen, respiration cannot happen and we cannot obtain energy. So oxygen is necessary and we obtain it through gaseous exchange. What about carbon four oxide? Carbon four oxide is a waste product. It's produced in a lot of the reactions that take place within our body. Now, because it's a waste product, it needs to be removed from our body because if it's left to accumulate, it can become poisonous to the cells. So this cannot happen. So gaseous exchange comes in. So gaseous exchange is responsible for removal of carbon four oxide from our body. Moving on to the next characteristic, excretion. 
So some of the processes that take place in organisms lead to the formation of waste products. Now, these processes are termed as metabolic reactions. So whenever you see the term metabolic reactions, these are simply chemical reactions that take place in an organism. Now, a lot of these reactions lead to the formation of waste products that are toxic, you know, that are poisonous to the cells. So if these waste products are left to accumulate within the body, they will become poisonous to the cells, which will lead to the death of the cells and ultimately the death of the organism. So this is where excretion comes in. So this is a process whereby waste or harmful materials from metabolic reactions are removed from the bodies of living organisms. And it's important because if it were not for excretion, the waste products will become toxic, leading to the death of cells. Characteristic number five, reproduction. So all living things die after a certain period. This is what is referred to as the lifespan. So the lifespan changes from one species to another. For example, humans might have a lifespan of around 60 to 80 years of age, and it's different in different animals and so on. For this reason, you find that the living members of a species need to give rise to new individuals. Why? To ensure the continued existence of the species. And this is what is called reproduction. If you're not going to have any new members of a certain species, it's going to reach a point whereby that particular species is going to become extinct. It will disappear completely from the world. So this luckily does not happen in most cases because of reproduction. By the way, have you heard of dinosaurs? Dinosaurs existed a long, long time ago, but they are now extinct. And this is something that we don't want to happen to any other. But this is where reproduction saves us all. You know, with reproduction, you ensure the continued existence of a particular species. So how do we define reproduction? So reproduction is a process whereby living things give rise to new individuals of the same kind. Now, I've underlined the following terms, giving rise. We use the term giving rise and no other term. So giving birth and so on, those are wrong. And the reason why they're wrong is because when it comes to organisms, organisms reproduce in so many different ways. If I may give an example of the bacteria, bacteria reproduce by splitting themselves to form two new cells. Now, in, the, in this case, this is not giving birth, but it is reproduction because they are giving rise to a new bacteria. So the term is giving rise. And we talk about new individuals, but of the same kind. So this simply means that you're going to have a horse giving rise to another horse and not an animal from a different species. So reproduction is important because it leads to the continuation of species and prevents extinction. On to our next characteristic, growth and development. So growth is defined as the irreversible increase in size and mass of an organism. So you can use the term irreversible or permanent, either is correct. So in this case, it simply means that this is a permanent increase in the size and mass of an organism. When an organism grows, it increases its size and mass permanently. So you're not going to have, for example, a toddler growing to become a young boy and then going back to its original size. That does not happen. Now, if it does, Morifi, run, run. Now, moving on to development. So development is defined as an irreversible change, you know, a permanent change in the complexity of the structure of living organisms. So growth is usually accompanied by development. Now, in development, what happens is that you're going to have organisms becoming more complex as they progress. So let me give an example in the case of humans. All humans initially started out as a zygote, you know, a fertilized egg, and then we developed to form an embryo a fetus until finally you have a baby and a toddler and so on. Now, if you are to compare the structure of all of these, you'll find that the organisms are growing and developing, moving from simple structures to more complex ones. And this is essentially what development is. Now, why is development important? It's because it allows the organisms to obtain maximum size to perform their body functions. Irritability. Now, as living organisms, we are exposed to an environment that continuously changes. You know, you have low temperatures today, high temperatures tomorrow, back to low temperatures and so on. 
So we need to come up with ways to number one, detect when these changes occur in our environment and then know how to respond appropriately to these changes. This is what irritability is. It's the ability of living things to detect changes in their environment and respond to them appropriately. So if we are having low temperatures, how would you as an organism, as a human respond? You're going to find somewhere warm to stay. Maybe close up the windows and the doors, put on some warm clothes, all of this to ensure that you keep warm. And why are you doing this? It's because the temperatures are low. Now, when it comes to irritability, animals are very rapid in their response. You know, they respond very quickly to changes in their environment, but plants respond slower. By the way, I want to make something clear. All living organisms are going to have all of these eight characteristics in total, all of them. So irritability is important because it enables organisms to move towards favorable stimuli and escape harmful stimuli in the environment. Okay, let me break that down. So stimuli are simply changes in the environment. So you're going to have some changes being positive, you know, good for you, and others being negative. So irritability allows organisms to move towards the favorable stimuli, you know, the positive ones, and move away from the negative stimuli. Our last one, movement. All living things move. All living things. Now, when you talk about movement, this is defined as the change in position of either a part of your body or the whole body of an organism. So if you were to change the position of just a single part of your body, that will be movement. So, for example, if I was standing still but blinking my eyes, that is movement. And if I were to move my whole body from one point to another, that is also movement. Now, when it comes to movement, some organisms have the ability to move their whole body from one point to another. This is seen in animals such as in humans, and it's termed as locomotion. So, locomotion is the movement of the whole body from one point to another. Other organisms are only capable of moving either one or few parts of their body. This is known as localized movement and it's seen in plants and a few animals. So why is movement important? It enables organisms to search for food, mates, shelter, and also to escape harmful predators and harmful stimuli. And that brings us to the end of this lesson.